Hello everyone and welcome back to Farming Simulator Tips and Tricks series of mine. This will be episode number two, which is part two. Oh, I don't know why I wrote there. Yes, yeah, part two or the final part of the previous episode. Um, we now have all our information together, so I'm very happy to share with you guys the results. Um, just to add in there that I have been made aware that the prices that I um, have recorded over here is actually available somewhere in the XML file in the game settings somewhere I'm not sure where it is but um, from the base price that they have there you get your variations and I believe they said it's plus minus 30% so it is possible to eliminate all of this based on that but I kind of like running on this because this gives me a more rough idea of what I'm actually getting in game and that is obviously in my game you could be getting different different results so this is basically just a quick recap on what we've said before and also to add in all the information basically declared the winner of the most profitable crop you can harvest <laughs> or sow, plant, whatever you like to call it there was one mistake that I did mention in a previous video and it's these numbers here um, I said that for medium is times 2 and for easy it's times 4. I was incorrect on that calculation. Um, for medium it's times 1.8, which is a bit of a weird one. And for easy is hard times 3. So I've updated that in spreadsheet. Those of you who have looked at the spreadsheet will have seen that there. Um, these prices represent hard, medium and easy based on the prices that I've been getting. So this is my recommended sell price. So you guys are more than welcome to reference this. Um, and then we got our crop yield. So we're gonna quickly run through this because this is what it's all about. So we're gonna run on best price because that's the best price I've achieved, but in theory we should run on average or recommended. This is the one we should, let's quickly color this thing bold and make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, and then we to resize. Okay, that's good. All right, so a few of them are being cut out, but this way we can see what's good, what's bad, and from personal experience of working with these, I can tell you which ones were easy, which ones were hard. So first of all, we got our free crops that contain straw, which means you have to do a little bit extra work once you're done harvesting. Okay. If you don't do that work, you will actually lose money. Now they've dropped the price of straw, it's not worth as much as it used to be. Um, so if you harvest a wheat field, you will get roughly this. Um, this is based on my modified field that I've been working on. Um, so it's 11,000 for the wheat and almost 6,000 for the straw. So straw is definitely worth it. So the, we're going to look at the total price for wheat. So per field, because all of this was done on the same field, the field we get 17,000 for wheat, for barley we get 18,365. What you got to bear in mind now is barley has a higher volume than wheat, so if you don't have the trailer space for it, it might mean you're doing more trips or something like that. You know, oats has a much lower volume and has a higher price, and your straw is almost always identical. I mean, it is uncanny. It's the same size field, so you would ex almost expect the same results, except for the fact that it's different crops. So in theory, it should be different yields of straw. Um, but yeah, so far, between the three that gives you straw, oats is the best one to plant because you get more money for it. Now I'm going to move on to ones that doesn't have straw, which is easier, less work involved. So therefore, you have a compromise. So it's worth a little bit less per harvest. But you don't have to go and collect straw. But if you were to keep collecting straw on the other three, then canola and soybeans would be worth more. You know. So then we got canola at fourteen thousand two hundred ten. Uh, what's the next one? That's regular harvester soybeans is fourteen four hundred three. So I think those are it. And then we go to the more other things. So we got um, sunflower and corn, which you need a different header for. So sunflower, fourteen thousand corn, twenty eight thousand. So that's definitely a lot better. Um, I would almost recommend this one. Ah, oh, sorry, that's potato is corn fourteen. Okay, now so sunflower is better. So between the things that you can do with a regular harvester, soybeans is and is pretty much the best you can do if you do not want to spend the time collecting 
fails. So soybeans, I sort of do a crop rotation between the two just as income because I don't want to spend the time collecting the bales. Um, yeah, I will start doing it soon because cosplay is out and it's getting loads of updates being fixed as it goes along. And then I can set up courses to do it. Um, but yeah, up until that point, I would I was cycling canola and soybeans. So to me, that was absolutely worth it. The next step is um, potatoes and sugar beets. So as you can see, they are almost double what your other crops are at 28 and 29,000. Um, but you need different equipment, expensive equipment, you know, a lot more specialized equipment. Which, they are slow, they work slow, but they are still better than sugarcane, which is horrible. And uh, Yeah, okay, cotton is kind of there between, yeah. <laughs> I would say cotton is between your your straw crops and your potato and sugar beets and cotton is boring as hell and slow as hell and if you don't get the modded combine it sucks okay then we get to the highest paying one of the regular stuff and that is sugar cane and sugar pain i will never ever ever do that again in my life it is horrible it's horrific it's really a terrible crop to work with um I had to have multiple tractors with the single lane harvester, like the one meter one, because the two meter self propelled harvester doesn't have its own storage, it's terrible with trailers, like it constantly glitches out, just gets stuck, and it's driving next to it is a real pain. And uh, yeah, you have to turn off crop destruction, otherwise, you will destroy half of your yield. Because you end up having driving through your stuff because they f your volume is absolutely insane. Like, look at that volume, it is huge, which means you are emptying trailers left, right, and center. And if your thing stops in the middle of the field, um, especially on the tractors, if you use tractors, um, you need to drive that tractor out of there and empty his trailer. And if that, if you're in the middle of your field and you've got crop destruction on, you're going to be destroying some of your crop. So terrible, I would never recommend anybody do this even if it pays more. Because if you don't turn on if you turn crop destruction off it's better, but it took an absolute lifetime with two tractors worth a harvester worth a trailer and a big trailer in the field with them that they could empty out onto. Absolute nightmare. Alright, next one. Woodchip. Now this woodchip came from Poplar. Haunting Poplar, which is the norm I would say for getting woodchip. High volume, very low reward. Not worth it. Don't bother. It is, yeah. And again, you need a forage harvester for this. So you can't even use your regular harvester. It's, yeah, it's not great. All right, then we go to our grass products. Um, so grass and hay is not that different from each other. Grass gives you 5,700. Hay gives you 6,700. And silage will give you, turning it into bales, 21,000. Now, bear in mind, that the grass grows quicker than most of your other crops, apart from sugarcane. Sugarcane is even slower than your regular crops. Um, but sugarcane, you don't have to replant like grass. So I did have this ramped up a bit before, but this is what I got per harvest on average. Um, it's 112,000 liters, not bales. So divide that by four. Um, and then you, sometimes it grows quicker, sometimes it doesn't grow as quick. It's it's varies, and even your yields vary throughout your field. So that's why I kept it on a per harvest version. But what you got to be in mind is, with once you've planted grass, the first time you're gonna have to weed. Every harvest afterwards, you never have to weed again, and you only have to fertilize once. So even though it might sometimes grow twice as quick as your regular crops, which gives you great return. You end up fertilizing the same amount of time and you're harvesting twice. So the extra harvest then counteracts the fact that you had to seed again on other ones. But if you take that times twice, if you are lucky enough for it to be like that, um, you are looking at 40,000, almost the same as sugarcane, and it's a lot easier to do. It's, it's really good. It's a good start crop, I would say, because you don't need that much kit anyway. Um, then we go to the most profitable one, trees. 
If you plant trees and wait for them 12 days to grow, the tree cells, once you chop it up into four sections of 8 meter, because if you get let it grow to 12 days, you can get four sections out of it, even though the top section is not worth a lot, but it still adds up, you can get an average cell price of 9,820 per tree. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Your, your profit margin on it is huge. Um, I'm going to be starting to do that in my Let's Play series because it is crazy good. Um, you, you, meet, you don't actually need that much equipment. You need a field. You need the harvester, which you only need to buy 12 days after you plant it. So you could plant your stuff, have no running expenses because you don't fertilize or anything. And then you go and harvest it. So only then do you need to buy your harvester. And you could literally lease it to begin with. And then once you've made your money from your field, you can go and sell it. I do recommend a, what you call it, a auto load trailer. But basically in that little field, same field that I got all these from, I planted 37 rows of trees, 23 trees per row. And your reward or your return would be that. 8.3 million versus that. Granted, that takes two game days to grow or the regular stuff takes two game days to grow and this takes 12 game days to grow so it's slow but after that you harvest and you harvest a row a day or something and you sell it and you get that each row you get and then yeah you make an absolute killing so guys thank you for watching this i hope this information helps you out and go out there and make some money all right cheers Thank <laughs> you.